So we're up to number 19 of our soul winning lessons. Today, we're going to look at the tragedy and soul winning. If you take your Bibles to Acts 16, 23. Soul winning has its ups and downs. One of the ups is God wants us to do it. And God is pleased. We saw that Romans chapter 10. How beautiful are the feet of them that bring the good tidings. A downfall is not everybody's going to listen. And up climb is people will get saved. A downfall, one of them, and I don't mean to discourage you, but just trying to be honest. One of the downfalls is what we're going to look at today. Now, it may not ever happen to you and I, but rest assured, in this wide world that we have where Jesus said where John says marvel not the world hates you and Jesus said know that the world hated me first that throughout history you got to study church history you got to study the book of Acts the tragedy of soul winning is an event that has happened and it has happened on American soil. There have been Bible-believing Christians saved by the blood of Jesus Christ on the soil of America in our history. And we visit the graveyards. We visit the places where the churches were. We, we read the stones. We've got the stories. It's a fact. Now, it may not happen where you are now. But it could happen. And we got to talk about it. It's part of our lesson. Now there are churches today being persecuted by the police, city officials. That hasn't led, read, led to arrest. We have had our own dealings with the public ministry. We have had the place, the, the, flea, the farmer's market where we're at. They had countless ways of trying to shut us up. And we've had the police called. And the Constitution has protected our right to free speech. And if the Constitution goes bye-bye. And we lose that free speech. The Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, what if they put me in jail? It's what we're going to read today. Now, what most of what I'm reading today has not ever happened to me. Thank God. But I know of people and I've heard the stories where it has happened. Acts 16, 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. Paul, preaching the gospel. Silas, preaching the gospel. And the magistrates ran off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Being beaten for the word of God. It has happened. Probably happening, and I mean today, I mean maybe not uh, October 4th, but present day. I know of a missionary husband and wife who has had their cameras ripped off their bodies and thrown and broken to the, onto the ground in Jerusalem. Another uh, same family in England were arrested. We have had, as a family... When we first started off, we had the U.S. Marshals come after us on the court property. We've had countless police drive up in their police cars, walk up to us in your room, multiple ways of, you know, you ought not be doing this, or we've got complaints. We've had many people. I've had one woman punch, uh, not, touch me against my arm and pull the microphone out of the socket of my voice amplifier. We've had radishes thrown at us. We've had where they try to hire musical DJs. But I have never been beaten. I've never been punched. I know presently one person recently was slapped in the face witnessing Jesus Christ in Florida. Orlando, I believe it was. It may happen, 
but it has happened. And when they had made, when they had laid many stripes upon them from the beating, cat of nine tails, they cast them into prison. So they have been beaten and they're put into jail for the word of God. For the word of God and for the testimony of God the Father, what did they do to Jesus Christ? He suffered. From the very moment that he stood before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council of the high priest, punching him, pulling his beard, spitting upon him, lashing his back with a cat of nine tails, then the Roman soldiers going at it, beating him, the crown of thorns, the nails, the whips, the Bible, the Bible says that the body of Jesus Christ was unrecognizable. If they did it to Jesus Christ, why would you think they're not going to do it to you? We in this country have a constitution right that we can do it, and yet Christians do not do it. Throughout the book of Acts, there's been persecution. Every time of persecution, the church grows. It's almost like in order to have a revival, you've got to have persecution. Those were the marks of the great revivals. I mean the great revival. Not the panty-waste, worldly revivals of the, of the modern day. I mean, George Whitfield. There were persecutions. You know why George Whitfield, who was not a Baptist, came to America preaching the Great Awakening? You know why God had to use George Whitfield? Because Baptists was illegal. Baptists were put into jail. Baptists were, were had the lands confiscated. Listen, a place where I grew up, Connecticut, Norwich, Connecticut, just north of where I grew up. I, I lived in North, but I grew up a little boy in New London, Connecticut, just north, Norwich. There is a green where Baptists were whipped. There is a church, a congregational church, where they took the property of Bible-believing, saved Christians and well-known names as such of Hannah Arnold. Now, you may not know who Hannah Arnold is, but her name's in the Land's Book of Life. I know where her grave is. Hannah Arnold, who is saved with her children and her second husband, except for one child, you know him as Benedict Arnold. If you ever visit Norwich, you know of Bacchus, the name. Bacchus were persecuted. They were called separatists because they were not part of the congregational church. This is American history. And I got the books here. I don't think I got where I can see them. But they're great books. I can't think of what the, the author is. American Crimson Red is a wonderful book. And he's got a few others. But for the word of God, for the glory of God, we see that Paul and Silas were beaten. They were whipped. And then they were thrown into jail. Charging the jailer to keep them safely. Now, why would they do that? What purpose would they have to say, hey, make sure? Because throughout the book of Acts, the Christians could not keep in jail. The angels kept taking them out, kept pulling them out as a sign to the Jews. Having received such a charge and order, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast and stocks. So not only did they put them in the most inner prison, but they also put leg cuffs upon their feet. They're locked up in a ward and they're locked up by chains for the word of God. I'm going to read the rest of this, but because it's a wonderful story. Yeah? For the fact is, at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. They didn't call for lawyers. 
They didn't cry boo-hoo. Woe is me. They didn't get an attitude. They didn't get angry. There's no bitterness. They are singing to the Lord. We'll see that again in a few moments. Everybody in that jail is hearing them pray, and everybody in that jail is hearing them singing glory to God. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors, all the doors were open. Uh-oh, we got trouble. We got a prison. We got the doors are all open. I've been in prison ministry. I guarantee at the prison ministry, if anybody came out, those doors would have been open, they would have come out. They're open. So, the great escape, I guess you would call it. And everyone's bands were loose. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. So here's this great opening of the doors and all the handcuffs, all the leg cuffs are loosened. And the keeper of the prison waking out of his sleep, uh oh, he's sleep on duty, third shift, tired, seeing the prison doors open and drew out his sword and would have killed himself. I'm in trouble. And it was trouble for a Roman guard of a prison to have anybody escape. It meant death of him and his family. So he's like, hey, you know what? I'm going to get this over with. I'm going to kill myself. Prisoner escape. Supposing that the prisoners have fled. So. We got men that were put into prison for the word of God. They're beat. They have been beaten. They've got stripes in their back. They're not feeling well. They are in agony, probably to the point they just feel so sick to their stomach, they are bleeding. They are not in the most comfort of home. They are not in a sterile environment. It probably reeks. And they're singing praises to God. They are glorifying God. And there's an earthquake by God. The doors are open. The keeper of the prison, I'm dead. But Paul cried out with a loud voice. That's interesting, that loud. Because I do have a loud voice. And it does carry. And there are people that come up to me. I've got to do this. We had a woman do that last week. That's too loud. You're too loud. Hush. Quiet. Keep it down. You're bothering us. You're disturbing us. You're ruining business. Paul with a loud voice. Jesus with a loud voice. Peter with a loud voice. Proclaim on the housetops with a loud voice. Listen, if a house is on fire, you know, excuse me, people, your house is on fire. You want to come out? No, you scream on top of your lungs. You would get something rolled up, put it so everyone can hear you. Loud voice. Saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here, that's a miracle of God. You tell me not one of them prisoners escaped. That's a miracle of God. Wouldn't you think Paul saw us? Hey, hey, God's letting us go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's let them go. No, we're all here. Then he called for a light. Oh, he's going to get a light. And he's going to get a light, not of a lantern, not of a candle. He's going to get the light. And it ain't going to be a piece of wax. It's not going to be of oil, but oil of the Holy Spirit. Call for a light and sprang in. <laughs> he boing into that room where Paul and Silas are. Came in trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Now he's not worshiping Paul and Silas, man. He's, he's at their mercy. They've been singing praises. They probably put him to sleep with the praises. They know who Paul and Silas are. And brought them out and said, Sirs, well, we've talked about, we would love everybody in the street to say this. What must I do to be saved? That's remarkable. 
I have never heard anybody say that to me. Now, after dealing with them, after talking with them, I would have to say, would you now would like to receive Christ as Savior? Or, or do you know what you should do now? Well, I should receive Christ. But this guy walks in. Paul, Silas, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Oh, I was beaten. I was put in jail. And yet God used Paul and Silas to save a jailer. God gave Paul and Silas the opportunity to get out of here. Did not the, the, the angel of the Lord do that with Peter? He undid the chains and said, Peter, put your sandals on and follow me. Went through one door, went through the iron gate. And he said, okay, you're on your own. You're free. Go. It's not what the angel of the Lord did to Peter. Is that not the attitude here for Paul and Silas? And yet they stay. God says, hey, it's open. But I got use for you. I know you're beaten. I know you're bruised. I know you're sore. I know you're tired. I know this is not the best place. But the guy outside that door wants me and wants to be saved. And they spank unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized, he and all his straightway. So a miserable event turned out good. Here's a man that got saved. Now I'm not going to say as far as out, you know, you're going to get arrested by the cops and you're going to end up in jail. Someone's going to get saved. No. It may. I hope it does. I've had... Most of the people who have received Christ as a Savior, as far as my ministry, has been through the jail ministry. They're broken. But from this attitude, they're going to put the handcuffs on you. Don't fight. Don't fight the police officer. He's only been given orders. Wait for the wait for the, the court date. Oh, I'm gonna sue him. Well, that's not the police officer's problem. I would say go ahead and sue, but right now, it's not the police officer's fault. It's not the the jailkeeper's fault. Don't give them a hard time. Give a testimony. They put you in that jail, someone's out, it's there. Say, hey, have you do you know anything about Jesus? The reason why I'm here is because I preach Jesus. They interrupted me. Would you like to hear about Jesus? No? Well, I'm going to sing praises. I'm going to glorify God if you don't mind. I've got the joy to and go at it. Well, what if I do that and they punch me? They were whipped. We'll see that in a moment again. And it has happened. If we believe the word of God is true history, Acts 16, there were men of God that were whipped, beaten, and put into jail for the word of God. Acts 7. Book of Acts chapter 7. 7.54. Now, Stephen has given the Jewish council one of the great condensed Jewish history ever. And he gave the high of Israel. Yeah, all right, Stephen. And he gave the sins of Israel. Arr, Stephen. So, and you would think that, wow, such a great message. Everybody's going to get saved. Everybody. Well, at the end of the message, let's see what happens. 7.54 And when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. Now, you want to talk about chewing out the pastor? They are taking his, their teeth and chewing, biting, gnashing upon Stephen. 
the preacher who just preached the ministry of the Jewish nation and Jesus Christ, and they're chewing him out literally. Have you ever, in a public ministry, had anybody start eating you? It had to happen. It's in the Bible. Here it is. And I would assume that in the history of the church, he is not the only one that's been chewed. There have probably been missionaries in countries where there have been cannibals and he brought the gospel to them and in return the missionary became the tribe's meal. I guarantee that's probably happened. Not a surety, but probably happened. They didn't eat Stephen, but they chewed him out. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Man, he's still preaching as they're biting and devouring him. Put your hand behind your back. Jesus saves. You have the right to. I tell you one more time before they put me in that car. Jesus will save your soul. You understand his rights? I understand his rights as much as I understand that Jesus saved my soul. Get in the car. Okay? You're going on the wrong. Officer, you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? Have you ever believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior? Let me tell you that on this date, Jesus Christ saved my soul. He's able to. Listen, officer, you got a very hard job. You, in your profession that you have, you don't know if you're going to go home. You have a family? You do not know if you are going to go home to that family. Listen, people are against you people today. They want you dead. They hate cops today. I don't hate you. You did your job. And I got a gospel track in my pocket. When we come out, would you grab that gospel track and, and read it later? Put my fingers on this pad? No problem. How do you want me to do it? Did I do it right? Line up against the wall? Is this how you want me to do it, sir? Yeah, I'm going to sue, but that, that's not your job. You're doing your job. And hey, you've got to listen to me. You know, the Bible says that Paul was put in bounds, chains. I feel sorry for the person that had to be with Paul his entire life because they forever got the gospel. Paul would not shut up about the gospel. You know, be like in the middle of the night, hey, you, guard, you really supposed to be sleeping? You know, there's coming a sleep for all of us one time. Some sleep a damnation, some sleep to be with the Lord Jesus. And bit the guards were like, oh, you got Paul today. No, 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 I'll trade you. I'll trade you the weekend for Paul. Still preaching. And you know, listen, the back of the police car in the jail cell, you don't have to be shouting. Just enough. You can use it. Maybe God wants you in that place, that predicament, as a, that Philippine jailer to get saved. And re be respectful. Now, what would you do, Stalia? I have no idea. <laughs> I would have to be under the grace of God to tell you the truth. Now, there have been some times in the public ministry where I thought I would have acted a lot worse than I did. But under the Holy Ghost. But I am not going to go far to say before we read on, oh, I will suffer for Jesus. That's a foolish statement. Because I learned that statement, the truth of that statement in the dentist chair. When that dentist was pulling out my tooth, and that tooth, he said, had bonded with my jaw. Whatever that means. In other words, the tooth is not coming out easy. And the Novocaine wasn't full strength. And when he yanked on that tooth to come out, and I grabbed his face. And I think I levitated out of that chair. And I'm going to suffer and die under the strength of Stiley Hayward alone. 
You never see me belly ache when I used to have a toenail infection, ingrown toenail. By the grace of God, you can do it, but by your own grace, by your own flesh and blood, no. Then they cried out with a loud voice. Oh, they're loud. I have preached the message. Again, listen, I use amplification. I'm loud. Where I am, I can I can be heard in a great... I, I can't judge the distance, but far. <laughs> I have no idea. I can't look at someone and see how far it is. And they will come up to me with me preaching. Yeah! You're too loud! Well, man, you're louder than I am now. Who's the loud one? That they can hear you yelling at me now. You're telling me to be quiet, but now you're the loud one. So here there was a loud voice. Stop their ears. Now we've seen an old woman doing that. <laughs> here they're doing that same thing. <laughs> Suck your thumb. You had a third hand, you put the thumb in your mouth and two fingers in your ear. There they're doing it. Stop their ears. And ran upon him with one accord. Man, just a mass assembly of us, the assembly coming upon Stephen, one accord. Now listen, in the public ministry I am in, if all those people decided at one time, with one unity, we're going to go attack him. I'm going to be in the hospital for a long time or I will be dead. It's got to be 60, 70 people, not more. And cast him out of the city. They drag him out and stoned him. That's where you take stones, you grab rocks, and you start chucking. In the head, in the chest, in the butt, in the leg, on the elbow. The, the knee, the cheek, the eye, the nose, the ears, the back of the neck, the back. Wherever they throw that rock, it hits you until you take your last breath. Talk about pain. Now, there's been a couple times in my own life I've had a rock swimming. Somebody idiot taking a rock trying to skim it and right into my forehead. That hurts. I've had you ever had a rock thrown at you? One rock. These are rocks and rocks and rocks. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Saul's there. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God. He's being rocked. Stoned. And like Paul and Silas in jail, they're singing praises to God. They're giving God the glory. Stephen is in agony. God, I love you. Jesus, I see you. With an ow, oh. And saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He knelt down. And cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said thus, he fell asleep. Absent from the body and present with the Lord, Paul said. Now that's more than being put in jail. That's a riot. That's a mob rule. Cops ain't going to help you in that point. And I can almost certain say that in certain religious places where no Bible, no Jesus is allowed, but they're a peaceful religion, this would happen. And it's probably happened. There probably is, in the church age, at least one account of a Christian being stoned to death for the Word of God, for the testimony of Jesus Christ. 9 1, Acts chapter 9, verse 1.
this is the unpleasant side of a, of a series of messages, as this is a series of messages. And I'm not telling you it's going to happen. And I'm not going to tell you it may happen. It may not. But then again, it may happen. And the persecution may not be as worse as being stoned or put in prison. You may have somebody, who do you think you are? Jesus freak. Think you're better than we are? Judge not least you. Listen, that's all persecution, Jesus said, for his name's sake. But there may be persecution that will affect the nerves of your body. And I don't mean the nerves that, you know, upset me. I mean the nerves, how? That hurt. You might get. I'm thinking. Of, you might get physical reactions from the Word of God that will last forever in your body. Paul, beaten man, just man. Can you imagine what he what he felt like by the time he reached the age of his death? Being stoned, being whipped, bruised, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And some of the persecution may, ow! And sometimes that ow may not go away. Acts 9 1 and saw yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord. Went unto the high priest, desiring of letters to Damascus to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way Christianity, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. Paul, before he got saved, man, high priest, I need a letter. What's the letter for? I want to go to Damascus. I want to get them Christians. I want to bring them back here. I want to put them in jail. I want to torture them. I want to kill them. Sign. Go. All right. Your public ministry. You may have one person in your city or town. They may hate you and your Jesus or hate Jesus and you. And they may try to do everything they can to shut you down, shut you up, put you away. Don't get upset. Don't get angry. It's in the Bible. Psalms. Acts chapter 9. Oh, this city council's against us. It's in the Bible. There was one man against every Christian, not only in Jerusalem, but I will go to Damascus and get them. I go wherever I can to get those Christians. I'll shut them up. <laughs> they said they called the cops on us. <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment too. As long as you preach the gospel, someone is going to hate you. As long as you preach the gospel, Remember, the cross of Jesus is because he preached the words of God the Father also. America has been highly blessed by God, the Christians, who do witness. Because we have been protected. Not so in Israel. Not so in England. For sure not sure enough in the Middle East. Acts 5, 40. Acts chapter 5, verse 40. Go through the book of Acts, which I have. Take a colored pencil or something and mark all the persecution. Acts 5, verse 40. One more page. And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, 
There's beating again. And beatings are some of the sentencings of courts in other countries. The rod. And Americans get all of the, oh, that's. Listen, some countries, if you steal something, you lose a finger. If you've done it 10 times, you're not going to do it 11. You're going to be so stupid. Ha, you stupid for today. They beat them for the word of God. After a man said, hey, they're in council. They, what are we going to do with these people? They're preaching Jesus. Everybody is going after them. Everybody, you know, we hate it because the temple business is going down. They're not honoring us men no more. They don't care about our doctorship. They don't care about we're, we're the pastor, we're the rabbi. Well, what are we going to do? And one guy stands up and says, listen, if this is of God and the angels, you better leave them alone. And let God have his way. Now, if it's a man, we've had two instances where, listen, it died. They died. It didn't last any longer. It's like the tea party. It just faded out. Boom. But the Bible, the King James Bible, is forever. The word of God is settled forever. Don't go against it. So say, okay, that's fine. All right, come here, come here disciples. Come here, apostles. We're going to beat you for the word of God. They commanded them they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. They beat them with a cat of nine tails or a rod and say, don't you dare preach Jesus anymore. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Oh, well, look at that. There is rejoicing and singing again. They've come out of prison to be beaten and threatened not to preach the name of Jesus. And they're rejoicing. That's, I saw one other place here, extra what I had written down. Chapter 4, verse 17 of Acts. These are all in Acts. But that is spread no further among the people. Let us surely threaten them. That they speak henceforth no man in this name. Verse 21. So when they had further threatened them. They're going to threaten you. They're going to make ill threats that will never happen. It's going to happen. And a lot of times they're just all mouth. You say, well, what happens if I do get beat? What? I'm not talking about that. I am not legal counsel. I am not suggesting you to do anything with any court case. Me, personally, I would sue. That's what I mentioned before. Somebody do something to me, I personally will sue. I will press charges afterwards. That's me. I am not giving you legal advice. The only legal advice I would get, give you is to get a hold of a lawyer that takes care of public ministries. There are a few of them. Listen to what they tell you to do. But what I'm telling you is these things are going to happen to you. You're to remain calm, cool, and collective during the arrest, during the threatening, during the beating, during the imprisonment. And one of your legal rights is you have a right to a lawyer. Let your lawyer do your representation. Let your lawyer be your guide. But when you look at the early church, they took the beatings, they took the jail, and they went, glory to God. I may say, hey, I would sue press charges. I never had it happen to me. Maybe I wouldn't. There have been people that persecuted me, and glory to God, we're in the car on the way home. That's what they did to Jesus. 
We had one time when they threw the radishes at. We're going home. I wonder if Jesus had radishes thrown at him. Maybe somebody punched me. Maybe I just said, okay, fine. That's for Jesus. I hope I wouldn't get, I don't know how I would react. And again, I'm not giving no legal counsel. I'm not a lawyer. I'm just reading to you from the Bible what would happen, maybe what I would do, and I'm not even sure what I would do. I talked to a lawyer, and he said, you know what, just for the glory of God, don't do nothing. I'd be wise to take his counsel. And there are at least people, if you look on the internet, Christian lawyers that will take care of you. Will help you. But you'll be threatened. You may be put in jail. You may get bodily harmed. <laughs> you may die. <laughs> if it don't happen to you, it is church history and it is church present. There are people today, I mean presently, who have died in this world for the word of God. That's a fact. Everybody said every everybody loves God. That's that's foolish. Chapter 14, verse 19. And whatever you do, don't go before the policeman and say that, that, that man Stiley Hayward said, No, don't you dare do that. Again, I am not giving no legal counsel. I mean, put that on the banner. No legal counsel. I'm not authorized. If you do get arrested, you do get violated, seek a lawyer. Pray about it. But in main frame of everything that will happen in that public ministry, be decent. Be proper. Be a good testimony for Jesus Christ. Chapter 14, verse 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconia, who persuaded the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. So here's another stoning case. As they done with Stephen. Now Paul is resurrected. But this is one of them beatings that Paul gets that will work on. The, listen, a guy was just stoned to death. Don't you think his body's going to wake up days after this? Ow, ooh. And he don't have morphine. He don't have codeine. He, there is no pain relief as we have today. And he gets up. And he preaches the gospel more. Look. Howbeit as the disciples stood round about him. He rose up. Came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. The Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city. See. People cuss you out. People will yell at you. Just preach the gospel. Lord willing be there the next week. That person slammed the face and slammed the door in my face and even hit my nose. Go to the next door. Oh, you should have heard what they called me. Sure, what they called Jesus. You know, let me see if I can find this. Is it John? I don't know. This is not in my notes. Oh. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. We got one more place in Acts, but, um,. Let's see if I can find this. Probably not. But I, wonder, I know it's in there. I'm looking for this to be. Yeah, 
So let's see. Week 42. Let's take a look at that one. There's something remarkable it said here. I probably won't be able to find it. I apologize. Um, let's see if I can do a internet search here. I apologize. Let me bear with me, please. Find it. Nah, I can't find it this way then. Alright. In John 21 25, the scriptures say, and there were, and talking about beating Jesus, and there also, and there are also many other things which Jesus did. No, that's not, that's not it. But when Jesus comes out of the Sanhedrin, He's standing before them. The Bible says they pull his beard out. They're punching him. They got the shroud over his head. Punching his head. Who, who, uh, who hit you, Jesus? And there, and it says in the account, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John, many other blasphemy things they've done to him that were not recorded. I mean, they just full out let Jesus have it. You know what Jesus' reaction was? He still went to the cross. What should you do? I keep going. Keep serving the Lord. Now, I, I probably could say that without legal advice. And again, maybe on, on grounds, but I'm not giving legal advice. What did we see? What did Paul do? What, what is your biblical advice? Somebody has done something to me. Paul was stoned. He got up. He walked away. And he went back preaching the gospel. The apostles, what we read, they were threatened. Don't you dare preach the name of Jesus here. The Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. They went out and preached. That's what the Bible says. That's counsel I can give you. What does God say? He says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. But, there's no but. Something happens to you and you don't know what to do, then you get yourself legal counsel. If not, talk to your pastor first. Say, Pastor, we had this happen on the street. And go from there. Whether to sue, whether to... He can't tell you to do. But, I can tell you be behave. And proper. Be a good testimony to the police. Be a good testimony to the look. Let the people say, "Wow, look! Look at those people there. They're just harassing that guy, and that guy's is still preaching. That guy's being calm. He's being cool. He's got something. Them other people, man, they're losing it. They lost. It. I listen to that guy more than I listen to them. Be a good testimony." One last place, Acts 19.23. Acts 19.23. I don't know what I would do, so I can't tell you what I would do. So if I can't tell you what I'm going to do, how on earth am I going to tell you what to do? Again, I've never been, I've been touched and the microphone cable pulled. I've never been punched. I've never been abused. I've never been physically. I've been verbally. I keep going. Now, if someone ever did that to me, I'll come back and tell you what I did. But hopefully, prayerfully, I would be calm, cool. And be respectful. That's the main thing. 1923. And the same time there arose no small stir among about the way. A certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, 
which made silver shrines for Diana, false goddess, brought no small gain unto his craft. I mean, he made big bucks. Whom he called together with the workmen of the like occupation. He said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we are we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but all almost throughout all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away much people, saying that there be no gods. Paul never said that, because there are gods, which are made with hands. You know, Paul says they're not gods, according to God. But to the heathen and other people, they're gods. So that not only this, our craft is in danger to be set at naught, we're going to go out of business, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be displayed. Notice how their pocketbook came before their goddess. Oh, we're not going to be able to sell silver shrines no more. Oh, yeah, about the church of Diana. And her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia in the world worshipped. And when they heard these things, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the. And it goes on and on and on. And they end up in a courtroom. They were at the wrong. Their own town folks said, Hey, you guys are wrong. But your public ministry is going to offend businesses. We've had people at the farmer's market. You're going to close this place down. You're going to shut it down. We're not going to be able to get fruit here no more. We've been there for four years. Now there have been vendors who are gone. For, I don't know why. Maybe they don't have no work. Maybe they die. Whatever it is. You're not going to shut the place down. They'll keep on going. I mean, we're there for 45 minutes. We're at the flea market. We pay for a table. We give them business. And people can walk by or people can stop. We're not going to close the flea market down. We're not going to close the farmer's market down. We're not going to shut down the Christmas parade because we go walking up and down the sidewalks passing gospel tracks. And we're sure not going to have it. You're not going to be able to pay your mortgage because we come knocking on your door. They will fall out and throw nonsense at you and your ministry. The things probably won't happen. Now, if the farmer's market did shut down, I don't think it would be us. I hope not. I don't want to shut them down. I want to preach the gospel. We see people walking back and forth, doing all kinds of business, and they just like, they don't care we're there. At least I don't think they care. There's one thing, though. Billy Sunday, the great preacher, shut down bars. Men turn away from drink. Great preaching like Whitfield did shut down places. Those days are gone. Sin is rampant in the church. There's only a few Christians. Of many that are saved. There's only a few that are out there in the fields working. And our main goal is not to shut anybody down. It's to preach the gospel. That lost people may get saved. I love to hear a place of sin closed down. That's not my purpose. I'm not here to shut things down. I'm here to preach the gospel to lost people. Preach the gospel. Not shut down this place. Not close this place. Not boycott. That's not what the Bible says. Preach the gospel to every creature. That's my purpose. As a result, if the business closes up, well... You should obey the gospel and got right and got saved. And got on conviction. Again, I am not giving absolutely no legal advice what to do if you were to suffer any things I spoke about today. You need to seek your pastor and or a lawyer. If you do have anything. According to the Bible, what the Bible says, things have happened to the apostles, things have happened to the disciples, things have happened to men of God 
who have preached the gospel and things have happened to you. And there's more in the book of Acts to study. And what they did was they went out and preached the gospel more. They were respectable. If they got angry, they didn't show it. Be respectable. And if you do, again, I want to get this a thousand million times. If you do need legal advice, do not get it from me. Go to your pastor. Go to a lawyer who handles these things. I am not giving legal advice. 